This is Wholesaling Houses Elite, the no fluff and BS podcast with tips and tricks to help you become an elite wholesaler. Our guest will spill the beans on what it takes to be the best. Hey, what's up, Wholesaling Houses Elite members? This is Max Maxwell. Welcome back for another podcast. And this week I have a special guest, Jalen White. How are you doing, Jalen? What's up, man? Appreciate you having me on the show. Very excited to be here. Absolutely, man. I had to reach out to you. For you, uh, for everybody listening that does not know, uh, Jalen is in a, in, a, in a mastermind. Um, you might have seen him in one of the past videos when I went to San Diego and I kind of went ding and he popped yeah. up right there. <laughs> so yeah, man, he's, he's a young rock star, very young, like 21 years old young, and he's doing some great numbers. You're living in, where are you living at now? So we were splitting time between, first we lived in Hollywood for about six months, and then mm-hmm. we split time for a few months, and then our lease that we had at, our, at the building there ended, so now we're in uh, Arizona. Arizona, cool. So yeah, I like, yeah. I like Arizona. What part are, are you in Phoenix? I love it. No, I'm in Scottsdale. Scottsdale. So I love it out here, man. It's beautiful. It's a little hot around this time of year, but nice people, you know, nice scenery. It's just beautiful. That's that's what ACs are for, so don't worry about that. Exactly. Um, and, and excuse the all this this is a new office so i can't put anything on the walls to they to they paint <laughs> so there's like imperfections and all that stuff just ignore that stuff in the background guys so reason why i wanted to bring jalen on because there's a lot of young people and i run this wholesaling houses elite facebook group there's a lot of newbies and a lot of young people that uh see wholesaling uh f- however they see it but you don't usually run across somebody that's 21 years old has actually been doing this since he was 18 years old I mean, and it is already successful. I mean, heck, he's already bought his first Lamborghini at 21, and I'm here trying to do it uh, at 32. So it's kind of, uh, I I just wanted people to be able to reach out and hear your story and kind of, you know, know what's going on. So kind of tell me how you got started in real estate at 18, because that makes absolutely no sense to me. (laughs) I know. Honestly, it didn't make sense to me at the time. Uh, First off, thank you so much for, uh, for sharing that. That's awesome. I really appreciate that. Um, But really, to start, it goes back to, um, I'm not going to go back to my young entrepreneur story. We all do that. We had some sort of business when we were 13, 14, 15. But it goes back to when I was 18. And I was in the car with my now wife, my then girlfriend's dad. And on the radio comes, hey, you can flip houses with no money, no credit. Um, You can be broke. And you can make it happen for yourself. Come (laughs) to this free seminar. And so sure as heck, he says, you know what, let's go. And I was I get really focused, so I was very entrenched in network marketing at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just turned 18. I think I turned 18 in November of 2014. This was in like February of 2015, right? So we go to this free seminar, me, my my girlfriend, and her dad. Um, and they basically teach us nothing about real estate. You know how it goes. It's all fluff. It's just yeah. a couple of stories. Even stories about multi-million dollar development deals, which it's like a a group of people going to a free seminar. It's just like crazy. But anyways, they upsold at the end for a $300 program. Now, I didn't grow up in a rich family. My dad's a truck driver. My mom's a nurse. I have five younger siblings. So do your math on the poverty lines on what they're making versus what they're spending on kids and stuff like that. Um, I didn't grow up with with some sort of huge break. And they had moved away at that point. I had no family. Um, I was sleeping on actually my grandmother's couch. Um, and, uh, sometimes on my girlfriend's dad's couch when he would let me, but you know how the dads are, they got to have their (laughs) eye on you. So that definitely is how it went. Um, but here's where my one big break comes. He paid $300 to send us to this seminar and we go there and he was initially going to go, but he's like, you know what, you guys, even if it just helps you buy your first house, I want to bless you in this way. You know, he's also a truck driver. So it was a stretch to him as well, but he sent us there. And uh, basically, all I learned was that it's possible to make 10 grand in two weeks with no money, no credit. I didn't learn any real strategy. They try to upsell you on 50 grand, which it works. You have the money, but I didn't. So I went home, studied on YouTube, and lo and behold, to to cut a long story short, I find a deal on a house that's worth ARV was about $90,000 at the time. It's worth now 150, which is just insane how much it's gone up in just a couple years. But it was 80 or 90,000, and I put up some bandit signs. And I was dead broke, so I had no money. And some guy hired me to put up his signs that say, um, work from home part time, make two to five grand a month. You know, like you have real estate investor seeks apprentice, you see those. Um, so I was putting those up for him. And uh, in this, the 
stack of 100 were 20 We Buy Houses signs. And I'm like, I'd been on YouTube, I had gone to a couple realtor listed appointments, just made a fool of myself, and I was like, this is my gold mine. I've, I've dreamt about having these signs, but I didn't have money in my bank account to buy them. So I take those 20 signs, I put out the ones he, he wanted me to put out, he never pays me, so I don't feel bad for keeping the 20 bandit signs. <laughs> and then I put them out, and I get my first, uh, first that first contract that we talk about, I get it for 15,000, and uh, I could spend an hour talking about that deal, but I closed it on the last day of the contract. I had sold it for 30000 double closed, and made a $12,000 check two days before graduation. And uh, I just remember going to school, showing my phone, my bank account. I thought twelve grand in your bank was such a large, exuberant amount of money. You know, I thought I was rich. Uh, now it's like that's a sad amount. You know, it's crazy the levels. Yeah, no, um, so quickly. But, yeah, absolutely. So, so you, you, so let's let's backtrack here. So you're laser focused. You you find out about wholesaling like how many people do on a on a, right. a seminar. Somebody tells you about it. You go to a, a seminar, it's free, uh, somebody blesses you with $300 to see the next one. You didn't really learn much other than it's possible. Right. Right? So now you know it's possible. You say, heck, if this is possible, I can do it. You go on YouTube, you start digging. You, you basically become obsessed with wholesaling. You find out everything you do. So you graduate from YouTube University, right? Yeah, right. 4.8, Umu Kanladi, and all that stuff <laughs> like that, right? And then yep. you go out and, and, and luck finds it. You get a bandit sign. You get a call. You find a house. You put it on a contract and you sell it. Yep. It sounds, it sounds so simple, but it's true. It's, I mean, you kept your head down and you, and you, you dove right to it. And, yep. I, and I think that's where a lot of people fall short is they find out it's possible, right? Because they see people like right. you. They see people like me. They, 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 it's all over the place. Evidence is there. And then they don't become obsessed with it. So right. then they, in, in the next three months, they're done. Four months, exactly. they're done. Exactly. And not to mention, they'll learn about it. Like, keep in mind, I closed my first deal on, like, May 18th of 2015. I had went to that seminar in February of 2015. That means I was sitting there on YouTube. I was going to meet with agents. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was going to an <laughs> agent appointment, trying to put a contract, a property that was listed on the MLS under contract, and it was just a joke. So don't forget, there was months of struggle of not knowing what I was doing, um, and at the end of the day, I did get a deal, but it, I got a little lucky on the bandit signs, but don't forget, I had been hoping to get lucky for months before that. So it's about taking the right action to let, let that luck come to you. You know, and I actually had made a few of my own bandit signs, put out maybe 20 or 25 of them, mm -hmm. cost me like 25 bucks or whatever at Home Depot and, uh, didn't get any calls on those. So I, instead of giving up and being like, oh, you know, I couldn't get this deal or that deal. I just kept doing it. And I happened to get those pre-printed signs, and it worked. So uh, people asked, I had this question the other day in the Facebook group, and people said, what is your best marketing method? And I said, consistency, right? right? No matter what it is, you just stayed consistent and you stayed with it. So your avenue to beginning was bandit signs. Right. And I'm pretty sure it's changed now. So right. kind of let's, let's fast forward, all right? I know this is a big jump, but you go from you've, you've made 12 grand or so, you, and you're in high school. Right, <laughs> you're in high school. You got right. listen, and you say twelve grand is like kind of chump change now, which it, it kind of is in our world. But if you, the average American, doesn't have twelve grand in their bank account, okay? right? So you're able to move forward now. And the other day, you you bought a Lamborghini, and it was probably just because you know I'm one of those guys too. I had it on my wall. I had the Diablo right. on my wall. They don't even make it anymore. And you're like, your affirmation of success was buying a Lamborghini, and you did it. You were able right. to do it. So, so, so wait, hold up a second. You're sitting in Scottsdale, Arizona, and your market is Memphis and Indiana. Is that what you said? Yeah. So I actually don't do Indiana anymore. Okay. Um, but it was Indianapolis and then Memphis, California, and Phoenix. And right now we even have a deal in Washington that I'm thinking about wholetailing that we have under contract. So, so – you're sitting, you, you, you've got a team, obviously, right? Tell me what right. the structure of your, your office is. Absolutely. So first of all, I don't have an office. I like the virtual model. I like to spend a lot of time with my family. And uh, once I find someone who can run my company, we'll open an office. But my team's very big, but very small at the same time. So I've got me. I've got Natalia, a sales rep. Basically, her, her main job is to get in contact with our leads that we generate and get them under contract. I've got George, who's also a sales rep, because... On a typical day, we generate anywhere from 10 to 30 leads. 
uh, from our cold call team, which mm-hmm. is we've got 10 cold callers. So that's why I say it's big, but I don't talk to them every day. And then I have a, a marketing manager who basically manages all the VAs, all the callers, um, and handles all that for me. And I only talk to Natalia, George, and the marketing manager. And uh, so that's what my team looks like. It's small, but it's kind of big at the same time. You yeah. Know? So let me get this straight. You're not sending mail. No, no mail. <laughs> so I see this a trend, and I and I and I brought this up months and months ago. That you know, and people were shocked when they were like, "Oh wow, you're doing a hundred thousand. You're not doing any mail." Well, right. I think us younger folks have have geared towards where it's like you know, we get on the phone because it's the most direct way to get a yes or no answer from somebody versus spending right. all that mail. What 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 made you lean towards the cold calling type marketing? So. For me, it was mainly just trial and error. So from, from my first year and a half, I I discovered the bandit signs. I closed my first two deals. I got an eight thousand dollar deal the following month after that twelve thousand dollar deal, and got that. So I had twenty grand in the bank, and I had a credit card. So I re- applied for a credit card after I applied or got my first deal because I'm like, you know, I heard put your marketing on credit cards, get points and stuff. Mm-hmm. So what I would do for my first pretty much year and a half is just, you know basically throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. So I'd send 15,000 postcards and spend eight grand on the campaign and I would get a deal or two, make 20, 40 grand from that campaign. But that's high pressure, man. When you got eight grand out there and, you know, a lead doesn't call you back, you're like worried, you know, because you got to make the profit now from that investment, you know. So that first whole year and a half was almost, it wasn't really a roller coaster because I was still enjoying life, Mm -hmm. but I was definitely stressed out a lot of the time because of that. I was like a high roller, you know, it's like, it's like, uh, gambling that's favored in your odds, you know, that's how, yeah. that's how it felt. Um, so then I paid five grand to go to a hot seat event, um, for, of Raphael Vargas. And I learned how to do this new strategy of calling sellers. And over the next two years now, or the past two years, I've kind of grown that to where, you know, we systemize it, we make the processes the right way. And, uh, you know, just kind of roll with it. So really it was out of necessity and and trial and error because I was done with, you know, trying to send an exorbitant amount of money on a direct mail campaign where if it bombs, I just lose that money. Like it sucks, you know? So with cold calling, you can always adjust your list. You can kind of, you know, roll with the punches as they come and not to mention the cost for leads a lot lower. It takes a lot more work to get started, but to me it's, it's worth the, uh, you know, it's, it's, the it's de- lack of ease. So when you're when you were sending eight grand a month in postcards, now eight grand in cold calling is a tremendous amount because that's essentially right. just staff and software. Right. And don't get me wrong. I, I would send eight grand and then not send another campaign for two months mm-hmm. because I'd wait for my deals to pull through. Yeah. You know, you got 20 grand in the bank. You, now you half your bank account's gone. It's like, you know, but that's typical. I mean, I know I, I, there's a lot of people that that do that. I mean, I know people that spend twenty five. Thirty thousand dollars a week, in, yeah. in in sending mail. So now you've got a team. You're cold calling. What is what is your average? You know how how many deals do you usually get a month? Um, what is the average size deal since you're working? Because you are completely what they call your your remote or your virtual wholesaling essentially. Right, exactly. And I love the model. Um, so for us, it depends on what markets have we focused on entirely for that month. Mm-hmm. If we're working on um, like LA or or Washington or Arizona, very competitive markets. So we're shooting typically for two to five deals a month mm-hmm. when we've got, um, now I have 10 callers. So if I've got five callers there, I want at least two deals that month from those five callers because that only costs me three grand. Mm-hmm. So if I get two deals there, average deal size is 15 to 20 grand, you know, we're making a good profit on that, on that amount of money. LA is a lot different. We might get a deal a deal a month in LA if we've got if we've got five callers on there because average deal size you know I made a hundred grand on a deal forty grand on a deal you know it's like average deal size is a lot higher yeah. I'm sure I've seen you walk in LA you know it's a lot more competitive takes a lot more follow up but the deal sizes are a lot bigger but in Memphis like this week we already have four deals um, just, just this, this week, week and it's only Tuesday so um, <laughs> You know, and uh, so hit me up if you guys, and I'm actually closing on these deals. Um, so hit me up if you guys do have any deals in uh, Memphis you want to sell. Um, but that's why I love, like, Memphis is a little bit more of a competitive, competitive Midwest market, but I know it because I started in early 2016 working it. So I know the zip codes, I know the players. Um, but that's why I think there's a ton of opportunity in the Midwest Kansas City, Indianapolis, Wichita, you know, cities mm-hmm. like that where um, I, I like your, you know, 
uh, Winston Salem. Is that where yep. you're at? Yeah. Yep. Just the 10 K deals. You can do a couple, three of them a week. And, uh, you know, before you know it, they're adding up quick. You yeah, know, one of my mentors, go ahead. No, go ahead. One of your mentors were, I was just going to say one of my men- mentors, Mark Evans DM, mm-hmm. he, uh, does all his business in Columbus, Ohio, and, uh, also Cleveland and Akron, I believe. Um, and he says, I like, I like an elf business, easy, lucrative and fun. So right. I consider my, my Midwest deals to be easy, lucrative and fun. They're quick. They're easy. You know, and that's why I don't try to move into the bigger markets and get more because, you know, somebody like you and I have, you know, because you're on you're on the West Coast, you know, the markets and we we are we're in masterminds. We deal with different people. Some people like less deals, bigger <laughs> margins. Right. I'm more like I can completely systematize my business and leave the country right. and and I don't have to worry about the, the larger deals I can do, you know three deals a week and and not have to worry about right. just a system because you and I have a, a very robust, small system, but it work is very efficient, very, exactly. very efficient. Now, when it comes to your cold callers, are they all local to your team or is everybody uh, virtual? No. So again, I love the virtual model. So I started out in early 2017. I had moved into an office and I had tried hiring first like two or three callers I think I had in the office in the beginning. And I had to fire one right away and then another one wasn't showing up on time. Mm -hmm. You know, $10 an hour employees, minimum wage, $12 an hour, whatever it is, uh, plus their commission on their deals. But you're bringing these guys in at just above minimum wage. They're not high quality workers. No offense if you're a minimum wage worker. You might be hardworking, but mine that I found were not hardworking. Yeah. So that was my heart. The toughest thing was finding people in my local area. And then, so I decided, you know what? Virtual, I love the model. I'm not going to have an office anymore. Um, and I decided to go all virtual. So all my VAs now are in the Philippines. And the biggest secret for me in having Philippine VAs be successful cold calling is having a sales manager to manage them. So... Mid last year, I basically got connected with my uh, marketing manager now, and he, it was him, and he was thinking about starting an agency, and I said, you know what, I want more callers, I want to spend a lot more on marketing on the cold calling side, let's grow. You know, I had, at that time, two virtual US callers that I was paying, um, we had kind of a weird numbers, I pay them $35 per 600 dials that they'd make, plus mm-hmm. $3 per lead, so it's just, you know, it came out to be about $14 an hour, and so... Yeah. Randy was at $5 an hour and he said, you know what? I have a few more guys if you want to hire them as well. So basically now he's got an office of 30 VAs. A couple of my friends utilize his VAs as well that we've grown um, over the past, you know, like year, maybe eight months, nine months. Mm -hmm. And uh, he manages them and not all 10 hit their 30 hours a week minimum like I want them to. Um, which is crazy. It goes from saving money to I want to spend as much money on this marketing campaign as I can. Yeah. But uh, you know, it now works. it's pretty systemized. I don't I don't talk to anybody. If there's an issue, I just say, you know, in our uh, we do a 10, 10 minute huddle daily and I'll just say, Hey Randy, please take care of this. Maybe, you know, we don't have the right phone numbers for a couple leads. Can you make sure they uh, ask the seller if this is the right phone number for for us to call them back? That kind of thing. Yeah. So, so uh, my channel and, and my Facebook group and my YouTube is a lot of beginners. And right. even though you're 21, you're not a beginner. You're you're a successful systematic. You own a business because you could have sent you can walk away. I mean, you don't you can turn off your computer and your phone today and you're still going to get those deals other than you got to sign them. Um, what what would you tell? Oh, I lost you a bit. Can you can you hear me now? There, Max. There yeah. You go. What can what what would you tell, you know, beginner wholesalers? What would you tell them uh, if they were getting started now? How 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 could they do it? What what would you advice Absolutely. you'd give? So so the first thing I could say is you guys are in the right place. Max is an absolute beast at what he does. Thanks, he man. is a killer. I know he's he's definitely showering me with compliments, but this guy is an absolute boss, and you found the right place to learn. So what I would say is pick one or two people, maybe three, where you can take bits and pieces from each person that you're learning from and utilize it all to kind of put it together or just take one program. I don't really know. But find somebody to learn from, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's doing a call or or buying a course or whatever. Just pick mm-hmm. one or two people to learn from and then just implement these stuff. 
You know, I remember sitting in my bed thinking, is this wholesaling game too big for me? You know, a little 18 year old, poor me. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you got to realize nobody's going to move out of the way for you. You got to make your mark. You got to just decide, I'm going to do this thing. You know, if you read Think and Grow Rich, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have, um, he talks about the desire and then, uh, you know, actually taking action. So the, the strategic, dedicated action. So you've got to realize, hold on to your desire, realize, okay, I want this. Okay, I want financial freedom. I don't want a boss. I want to have money in the bank. And then using the people that you're following, create strategic action. Okay, with consistency, consistency like you said, I'm going to send this amount of mailers out or I'm going to do this amount of bandit signs or I'm going to do this amount of cold calls or this amount of voicemail drops or whatever you're doing and decide that you're going to do that until you see success because other people are seeing success following those methods. And Correct. the only reason you wouldn't is because you gave up or you're lazy. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, right before you gave up right before the pay dirt. Right. That's awesome, man. So, you know, kind of to wrap this up, where where can people find you? Because I know you're active on social media. I know you got a YouTube channel. I, I want people to follow you because you're a source of inf- inspiration towards, you know, anybody in this, especially the, the people that are even younger than me that are just wanting to get started. Because I get hit up a lot by people in high school and, you know, right. they're they're right in your path, man. Where can they find you? So you guys can check me out on Instagram at Jalen White, J-A-E-L-I-N. You can check me out on YouTube at Jalen White. I don't post a ton. I need to post a lot more. Um, Surprisingly, because you know your gets. wife Sometimes, does YouTube. <laughs> right, exactly. You know how it gets. You're running a business. You're like, oh, I'll do a YouTube video tomorrow. No worries. And before you know it, you know, a couple of weeks have passed. Yeah. So, um, but YouTube channel, definitely, I've got like 40 free videos on there. Um, I've got uh, my Instagram and, uh, and then, you know, Facebook. You can send me a friend request on Facebook. Yeah. And I'm not sure if I'm in your group, but I definitely need to you know, yeah. hop in there. Check it out. Ho- wholesaling houses elite go in there because I think you can answer a lot of questions, uh, yeah. because you have real life experience doing this. And I, and I want people right. in there because it's not just come to wholesaling houses elite and get all the information from me. Cause I don't have a course for sale. I'm too busy running an actual business, so I don't have the time to really make one, but right. it's, it's good when people like you can come into the, 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 the group and you know, you got an extra 15 minutes, answer a few questions from your perspective. I think it sure. sheds a lot of light on a lot of newbies. Um, but recently I've seen you tag up with some very high level young guys, uh, millennium guys like myself, and you guys are doing a, a, a live event. Is that what it is I'm seeing? Yeah, yeah, we are. We actually, uh, we're just about at full capacity. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's funny because we're doing it in Scottsdale, Arizona. It's two days, June 8th and 9th. Um, And we had initially thought, okay, we're going to get 25 people. Now we have like 50 people coming to this event. Wow. And uh, we're just excited because most people, their trouble is getting leads. Mm -hmm. Um, And then obviously process and, and sales and stuff like that. But a lot of people have trouble getting leads. So we're covering all of our systems from A to Z. You know, I could probably talk for eight hours exactly on just the cold calling. You know, I'm sure you could as well on on your marketing strategies. So Carlos and Sal are one of the guys who uh, are a couple of guys who I'm doing the event with. And then Alex signs. Mm -hmm. Carlos and Sal made 400 grand last month. So I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot just from watching their part of the the event. Hold on a second. You hear what he said, guys? 400 grand last month. All right. Right. Keep going. (laughs) Because I met met Alex. He's uh, he's now a member of of our mastermind because i met him in san diego so it's yep. cool to meet him i know he's young he's high level how old is he now i forget he's 21 as well in fact he actually went to that first deal i told you guys about with me to look at you know what i was doing i didn't i wasn't ready to teach somebody so he kind of learned on his own on youtube mm-hmm. but now he's i think he did like 600 grand last year and he's probably gonna do about a million dollars this year went to the same high school same age same background um and he's killing it now. So that's that's crazy. What's your man. excuse? There is no excuse, man. You guys got to get right. out and do it. Stop looking for excuses and look for uh, reasons that you don't want to fail and and be mediocre anymore. Because I'm telling you what, I, I, and and I know this is this is kind of crazy, but just having the financial freedom to do whatever it is you want to do is such a stress reliever in in right. your life, man. I mean, just being able to your decisions are no longer decided on money but if you have the time and you're prioritizing exactly what you want to do man but um so listen make sure you guys follow jalen make sure you go to wholesaling houses elite on facebook join join there because i'm pretty sure he's going to become a member follow him on all the social media stuff and um 
Dude, like I said, I really appreciate you coming out here, man. Any last words appreciate before you, you depart? Me, man. I, I do have one piece of last uh, words. This is not alcohol. This is water. <laughs> yeah. My family was just in town. We flew them out and, uh, you know, a bunch of kids here. So we got red solo cups. No, no, so in case anyone's no, like, no. this dang alcoholic. Listen, you know? as, if he's an alcoholic making that much money, uh, go go for it. Who gives a damn, right? <laughs> This is uh, not a politically correct channel. But, yeah, man, Jalen, yeah, thank exactly. you so much, man. I'll see you at the next match. Are you coming to Charlotte uh, in July? Um, yeah, I'm I'm currently planning on coming to Charlotte. So cool. I will see you there, man. I'm excited. We're uh, It's a great group of guys over there. Yeah, man, and let me know if you are going to Memphis anytime soon. I will get in a plane and fly out there and meet you because I haven't Beautiful, been to that man. market yet. Walk through some deals and yeah. stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. uh, by the way, if any of you guys are interested in cash flow deals, Throw in uh, a contact form on our, our site because, uh, like I said, we, we're always getting deals. We're getting a lot of deals in Memphis. So What's the website you know, looking to, to, to drop a deal in there? American Strategic Wealth. So if you want to throw a contact form, I'll have me or one of my sales reps contact you. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you're interested in something that rents for $750, $800 in a good neighborhood. We got those for $35 to $45 all day long. Boom, selling so. tur turnkey units. I love it, Jalen. Yep. All right, brother. I'll see you in Charlotte coming up, man. Thanks for getting on the podcast. And once again, guys, I will see you next week. Peace. All right, brother. Adios. Thank you for listening to the Wholesaling Houses Elite Podcast with Max Maxwell. Make sure to tune in next week to see what elite wholesaler will have in the hot seat.